What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So there are 12 different things that are wrong with this design right here. Now, can you spot them? Don't worry, if not, it can be very tough. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through and show you exactly how I would tackle redesigning this de design, essentially to make it look much, much better. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients in jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so here is this ugly design and we're going to make a number of fixes uh, to make it look a lot better. So we're going to keep the original right here. I'm going to shift out just to add a little arrow right there. And these are going to be our fixes over here. So the first thing I'm looking at is top, you know, left, right, top, bottom. We're going to start with the nav bar, um, the logo, the navigation, this for the, you know, the primary and the secondary all look solid to me. So I'm not even going to bother with that. It looks pretty, it looks good. Next up is going to be the headline. Now this here is the first problem. Uh, if you look throughout uh, the rest of this uh, UI, we'll see we're using pretty much the same font all throughout. And that's a font called Aileron or something like that. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Um, and then we have this weird wacky font that it's just, it looks sci-fi, it just, it looks cheap in regards to everything else. So more, of, more often than not, stick with the basics, stick with the same font that's found throughout. And so we're gonna change that back to the font that's already found. Now this presents us with a second problem, and that is a lack of typographic visual hierarchy. So when you have a landing page and a hero section, as this is called, where we have the uh, headline and subheadline, you really want the emphasis to be on the headline. You want that to be the type that's read first. The problem here in the context between these two different pieces of type is they're still too similar in size and appearance. You're not really sure which one you should kind of look at first. You really want to reinforce that through size and also font weight, all right? So we're gonna make it a lot bigger, maybe like 60, and then also bold it up as well. So I think I might even go 65. Eh, let's try 70. There, I kinda of like that, but now we have an issue where things are kinda of overlapping each other, which is completely fine. What we'll do is just select, I'm gonna select everything like this, and then we're just, we're going to deselect the headline and move stuff down. All right, now I'm gonna take this background, we're gonna move those back up. All right, now that's much better. Take a look at this right here, where we, we've only made two changes really at this point. I, how this looks versus this. Much, much better. It's, a, it's a, the same font that's found throughout, so we're simplifying things, and we're also really increasing the size to establish that proper visual hierarchy. Okay. What would be up next? One thing that I really dislike that I see a lot of aspiring UI designers make is I expend, ex, extended letter spacing or tracking as it's called. Um, this font right here, this type, this piece of type where it says reach the largest block, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if we look over here in this section where it says 9%, that's your letter spacing or your tracking. Uh, more often than not, especially when you have multiple words or a sentence, and especially a paragraph, you want to keep that at the default uh, value for for the font. Otherwise, <clears throat> sorry, I, I have something in my throat. I uh, if we don't do that, uh, it makes it more difficult to read. So I'm just setting that back to zero or the default value for this particular font. And if you look over here, it just it's compared to this version. This type over here is easier to read. And I've seen people even extend this out way further and it just looks silly. It's a really good way just to kill uh, the, the professionalism of, of your design. 
So outside of that, coming up next, I would say another thing, another fundamental that we're looking at here is would be scale. I think these I right here, these icons are probably a little bit too large. So I would like to scale those down. So I'm gonna take all three of them, hold shift and alt, and move them back here into their centered positions. Right here, roughly. And now that, in my opinion, is a decent improvement. Now the next, the thing that's coming up next, and this is an objective, definitely don't in UI design, and that is these right here. What's the problem? Well, it's a lack of contrast. It's difficult to read, all right? So if we select each one of these, we'll see that there's been a, it's white, but it's only at 33% that's nowhere near enough contrast given this particular background. You wanna make sure you have at least a minimum level of contrast. And that's something, it's a standard that's put forth by the WCAG, which is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And I, you wanna have a minimum contrast level. And there are plugins, uh, especially for Figma and Adobe XD, uh, called Stark, Stark Contrast Plugin. It'll help you know if you have enough contrast given the foreground element of your type versus the background. So we're gonna bump that up to 100% white. And immediately it becomes much easier to read as opposed to this. So we can see these versus these. Guess what? We can read them now easily, all right? So we're making our way. This is actually looking quite solid. What is the next issue coming down? Just looking down the page. Well, it's gonna be these buttons right here. I, uh, Our partners, minting, process, and payment methods. So the big problem right here, there's actually two problems. First is color. We don't see green at all in this design, yet we're introducing green right here in these buttons and it just doesn't work well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a color that exists somewhere already in this design and just adjust the shade and tint values, or our lightness or darkness, um, to make these buttons work better. So we're gonna take all three. We can see we have our fill color right here. And we're just gonna take the eyedropper tool and maybe we'll use this purple but instead of making the, the, these purple, like the same exact you know, value of purple, we're gonna um, make them a little bit less understated because these aren't really important buttons as compared to our primary call to action down here or up here in the navigation to start a campaign. So what we can do is we can uh, add, make these a little bit darker and we could possibly add tone, which is to simply uh, desaturate, take the color out and introduce gray. So something like right around here, I think would be probably pretty solid. All right, then now next up, look at the size of the type. So if we look at the size, it's size 12. You pretty much never wanna go that little, especially for a call to action like a button. So we wanna bump these up and make sure they're a minimum level of acceptability. So I would say a pretty good size would probably be 18 for these uh, buttons right here. Now we have to recenter those real quickly much, much, much better. So now take a look at this whole section, including the buttons that we just adjusted in the before version versus the after version. And everything just flows so much more smoothly and it's it's way it looks way better. All right, next up, what about this call to action down here where it says, ready to get started, start my campaign. All right, so again, we're introducing a color that doesn't exist in this UI. Um, not to say that you always have to stick with one color as in a monochromatic approach, but this particular color, in my opinion, just really doesn't work well with this purple up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to the primary color that's already found. So we're gonna stick in this con context, a monochromatic approach where we're using pretty much just one color. So we're gonna take that color and there we go. All right, so this versus this so far. Much more pleasing on the eyes over here on the right. Now finally, we have this remaining section down here and there's a number of issues that we need to fix. All right, so first, again, we're using that color that just kind of looks strange in my opinion. So for this type of uh, aesthetic, we're just gonna take this and make it white, all right? And then we have that extended letter spacing or that tracking 
that's down here. And it just does not at all look good. So it's 15.5%. Let's just reset that sucker back to zero. And it looks, in this context, I so much better. Now, one other thing I would look at is uh, tracking, or not, or letting rather, which is your line height, the, the, the amount of white space between your lines of type. It's at 130. I usually like to bump that up to maybe like around 145, 150, right around there. And then secondly, we are also, in the final thing that we need to, to adjust, we have a kind of like a sub headline and a headline. They're very similar in size. Actually, one is 30 and this one's 32 for the font size. You wanna really reinforce the size uh, of these, these values so that they work better uh, and that we establish that visual hierarchy. In this context, you want people looking at this headline versus this subheadline. So we can make this one smaller. So maybe we can go down to 20, put that right around there. Maybe we'll bump this up. And then position. Notice how if we get our, our rollers and we put this right there at the top of this little illustration, how this kind of just falls up on top. What would be better is if we took all this type and we centered it vertically within the available space found beneath. All right, so now if I extend this out just a little bit, we now have our before and after. And we'll take this and kind of get this center back up. There we go. And that is it. So as we can see, we, we have this uh, before version which has so many different things. It may be difficult for you to ascertain what exactly all is incorrect, but once you develop that fundamental, the eye for fundamentals, you'll see that we can really have a significant before and after with not much work. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.